Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that most trainers in this industry don't have. And this is an area of a lot of trainers business that I work with them one-on-one -on, -one on. Okay. So if you watch this video and you want to get in contact with me or you need help setting this up in your business, then visit the description below the video. There's a number of ways that you can communicate with me and get in contact with me to get my one-on-one -on -one help. So today I'm going to be talking about the parent and player agreement for one-on-one -on -one or small group training. So when I work with a coach privately or when coaches join our accelerator program, one of the most common problems that they face with customers that they work with is they don't have an agreement in place. They don't have a co training contract in place. So what we do at our company is we help coaches to build those systems so that the business can be a bit more stable and so the coach and the business is protected. Now, something that we focus on and the, the purpose of this video, I'm going to share with you four very important areas of a parent and player agreement that you need to have within the agreement are the following. OK, so the first one, when you're creating a contract for parents to sign that join your program, the first thing that has to be included into the contract is the code of conduct. So essentially, the code of conduct is the, the parent and player behavior. So what are the expectations of the player? What are the expectations of parents? when they watch the session, when they drop off their child and when they pick up. OK, so a couple of really important things that you need to need to include here is think about what you expect from the player during the training session, what you expect from the parents when they're dropping off their child. So making sure that they're dropping off the child on time to the training sessions making sure that they pick their child up uh, on time, because if you have back-to-back -back sessions, that could affect uh, your next session if the parent isn't picking up the child on time. So code of, conduct, code of conduct should be included in your parent and player agreement, your essentially your, con your training contracts that state what are the behavior expectations from the child so from the player so as a coach do you expect the child to train hard listen to you be coachable do the homework uh, arrive on time give a hundred percent listen if you're doing group training be a good team player okay so you have to include all these expectations into your agreement Right. So that the first one is code of conduct. Now, the second thing you need to include into your contracts are the commitment and participation of your customers. So the commitment is essentially when does the contract start and when does the contract end and making sure that your customer understands that being part of this program is a three, six, or 12 month commitment uh, in the program, okay? Now, participation is, right, what is that child or what is your customer, your players going to be participating in? Is it one-on-one -on -one training? Is it small group training? Okay, so parents have to be really clear about uh, this. Now, I'll give you a very quick example I worked with a coach who created his own uh, contract. Now, a problem that he had with a customer, okay, and you might be able to relate with this, is that the coach created the contract and the customer signed the contract, sent it through, 
But what happened is there was a miscommunication, and I'm going to get to the third point, about what program that player was participating in. So where that pet, that coach was putting the player into the small group training session, that parent thought that they were buying into one-on-one -on -one training. So essentially, it, the, the parent and the player were a little bit confused on essentially what program they were part of, okay? So in your agreement, in your contract should be included, what is the commitment for the program? Is it three, six, or 12 months? And what participation of the program will that child or will that player be participating in? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it small group? Is it a camp? Is it a clinic? Okay. So making sure that that is clear. Now, the third one is something that I touched on very briefly, but it's communication. So making sure that you're clear on and in the contract, how the parent is able to communicate with you as a coach. So to give you a very simple example, there's two ways a lot of coaches that we work with communicate with their customers. First one is they will create a WhatsApp group and all the communication is done through that WhatsApp group. Another form of communication is there's coaches that we work with that create communities. So they will create a school community group and all the communication between coach and customer is done through that community group. So the customer can log in, ask any questions, see the training timetable and the calendar of what is the upcoming sessions, okay? So if you need any, any more help with any of these things, either setting up a WhatsApp group or, or setting up a school community group, this is something that we specialize in. Visit the description below. There'll be a number of ways that you can get in contact with me through there to get more help. Now, the fourth and final one, what to include in your contract is the financial commitment for the customer. So what essentially is that customer paying for? So what is the package? What is included? And what is the total price that they are paying? Okay. Now, if they're making an upfront payment for three, six or 12 months, then you have to make sure that you are clear within your contract that it is an upfront type of payment. If it is a month to month billing, then you've got to be sure and clear in your contract that you state that as well, that a specific day in the month, every single month, that customer is going to be billed. So if you have put the contract or you have set it, set the payment up that every fifth of the month they are going to be billed then you must state that in the contract that every fifth of each month that customer will be billed for the training sessions in that month. Okay, so making sure that they are completely clear with what they're paying for, how they're going to be billed, how they're going to be charged and what is essentially included in the, their training package. Now, logistical responsibilities is making sure that you're clear on where, what day, time, your training sessions are going to be every single week. So something that we work with coaches on and I help with coaches is setting up consistent training sessions on a weekly basis where it's set day, set time every single week so that parents know where and when the training sessions are at. And they don't have to be continuously uh, contacting you or following up with you to find out what day, what time are we training this week? It's going to be every single week, Saturday, 9 to 10 at that a specific venue. OK, so that's the logistical responsibilities, the set day and time. Also, what it, what do your players need to bring to the training session? So if they need to bring a bottle of water or a drink, do they need to bring uh, shin guards, shin pads? Do they need to bring cleats, uh, football boots, right? What type of surface are the training sessions going to be on? Okay, all of these things 
are part of the logistical responsibilities that parents need to know and need to be included into the contract that you have with them. Okay. So what is the financial commitment? When am I going to be billed every single month? How am I going to be billed? And also what should my child bring every single week? And what time and day should my child be attending the training sessions? So if you need more help with this, if you want to set up uh, training contracts into your business, reach out to me, visit description below. Um, that, that, you, that will be the best way you can communicate with me to schedule a call where we can go through where you're currently at and how and if we are a good fit to help you, you and your business. Okay. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content.